President Volodymyr Zelensky says North Korea is sending its citizens to help Russia's military fight. According to the Ukrainian president, an increasing alliance between Russia and regimes like North Korea is imminent. President Zelensky's allegation comes amid an increasingly friendly relationship between Moscow and Pyongyang. Multiple governments have accused Pyongyang of supplying arms to Moscow for its war in Ukraine, a charge both countries have denied, despite significant evidence of such transfers. The two nations have fought increasingly warm ties since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Joining me live to discuss this latest threat is Senior Fellow, the Potomac Foundation, Dennis Gurak. Good to have you join us on World Now. What, what do you make of the growing alliance between Moscow and Pyongyang? Uh, thanks for having me. Um, pleasure to join. So I think if <laughs> by now it hasn't been clear that, uh, you know, it's not just a Russia-Ukraine war, but... Uh, more like a hybrid uh, global conflict uh, is uh, you know, happening. I think this is uh, clear evidence of such. Uh, so there are there is evidence presented today by Ukraine that uh, actually Russia trains uh, North Korea's troops, and uh, some of them already are at the front lines and are, have already fled. So uh, well. This is, uh, you know, new country joining the war, um, and uh, it has one million army, uh, roughly. Um, so that's just what it is. And even before this latest uh, claim by Volodymyr Zelensky, Kremlin spokesperson has described the allegation of receiving mercenaries from North Korea as hoax. But you know, both South Korea and Ukraine have reasons to believe that it is actually true. Who do you think is telling the truth here? Uh, look, I, I don't think there is any doubt that uh, you know North Korea is a rogue actor. Um, so, and I'm Ukrainian myself, so um, I think uh, both Ukrainian and uh, South Korea statements are true. So, if North Korea is actually becoming actively involved in this war or in the invasion of Ukraine by Russia now, what could be the potential impact you see it have on the ongoing war? It's definitely going to be harder for Ukraine because, again, North Korea has one million army. Uh, but I think uh, it's an evidence of an impact on much larger scale, not just on the Ukrainian front line. Um, if you've seen, uh, so there were reports that uh, North Korea has blown up the roads from South Korea, uh, connecting it to South Korea uh, today or yesterday. And um, that's also a sign that they're preparing potentially for a conflict um, there. Um, and there is also uh, extended, uh, extensive, sorry, Chinese military Navy drills. Uh, around Taiwan uh, happening uh, these days. So it's a muscle play and power play at, at the least. Uh, but uh, these are all potential dangerous signs that, uh, you know, um, the pressure on the West will, will continue to mount the pressure on the U.S., and especially because the elections uh, in the U.S. are about to happen. Um, so one of the um, rules uh, in geopolitics is that there are no coincidences. And that's exactly what it is. And talking about the West, do you see this latest claim coming from President Zelensky inspire favorable response from the West regarding the president's plea to use long grain missiles in Russian territory? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's a logical need. <clears throat> you know, if NATO and the U.S. really want Ukraine to win the war, that's, uh, that permission should be given immediately. Otherwise, uh, it raises questions, what are, you know, actual interests of, of the West? Uh, you know, there was an argument recently that uh, you know, Russia has some red lines to use nuclear weapons, but the situation clearly shows that it doesn't. It's all a bluff. 
So uh, Ukraine's curse incursion is a testament to it. Um, so the sooner the West approves use of long-range weapons uh, in its entirety, not just some countries, not just some systems, uh, that's gonna you know contribute to Ukraine winning the war. And then you know, earlier you actually you know referred to this as a global conflict. Do you think the West and the rest of the world are actually doing enough to uh, achieve peace in, in this region? Uh, I would rephrase it uh, because peace is achievable only through Ukraine's victory. If Ukraine loses, it will uh, the um, instability and security will diminish um, in in the region. So Russia will attack NATO at some point in time if Ukraine doesn't win. Um, so a lot is at stake, and you know. I think the West is just indecisive in how it's uh, approaching uh, the resolution. All right. And uh, talking about the West, you also mentioned earlier the elections are almost here, less than a month to go. And, uh, you know, it, it only sounds logical for, uh, you know, the U.S. to maybe want to take a step back and not go all out because whatever action is taken at this time, would either make or ma, you know, whichever party is taking such actions. What do you think about that? Uh, frankly, you know, it comes down to very simple emotion. Uh, you cannot uh, win uh, with the bully which Russia is um, and China is uh, just supporting Russia and North Korea is just by uh, you know, giving uh, in and giving something in return. It will just continue the pressure. So uh, it's not on the West to try to um, create peace here. It's Russia who's at fault. It's Russia who attacked Ukraine. They are the aggressor. They need to be held accountable for their war crimes. And that's the only possible scenario. All right. And it does appear that Ukraine is making some progress in its incursion in the Kursk. Uh, would you talk to us about, you know, what you're hearing about that? Uh, Ukraine is holding ground. Uh, Russia is uh, pushing back, obviously. They've relocated something around 50,000 troops now um, and to, to Kursk region. Um, so Russia try, will try to gain as much ground as possible before uh, the weather conditions uh, get worse. So, and the timeline for them to do something is literally a few weeks. Because in November, in this part of the world, uh, the ground gets wet and uh, that stops any armored uh, offensive possible, frankly, or just greatly decreases its effectiveness. All right, then. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your perspective with us regarding this issue. Dennis Girak is a senior fellow, the Potomac Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us on World Now. Thank you.